Morning boys and girls. This is not a speed run, this is just a tribute. Uh, we are 1244. So it's starting to get serious now. And we have the white pieces, opponents rated 1165. We're going for the throat. I'm, I'm going to keep playing Viennas because I'm enjoying getting back into the old Vienna. One of the knights is likely to come out. That's a move. Also, that's a move. That's a move. There's lots of moves. Okay. Go for Vienna Gambit. 1165, there is a chance that they'll accept. I mean, people do accept at, at, at higher levels, but uh, you shouldn't. You simply shouldn't. There is no... Okay, now, I think this is exactly what we had yesterday. This leads us into what I call the Halloween variation, because it's similar to Halloween Gambit, um, where you get, like, a couple of Tempi to chase these knights away. Um, but the difference here is that material is equal. In the Halloween Gambit, you actually gambit a knight for the privilege of um, winning this time at the start of the game. Now, yesterday I had a similar position. Basically, this knight's going to go there or he's going to go there. Whatever happens, it's going to be e5. Now, hitting the next knight, who is in a little bit of trouble, a bit like the Vienna Gambit, all of these forward squares are actually covered. You know? I mean, right now, the knight kind of guards this one, but it's got to move. So then e5 is going to come next, 100%. Even if the knight comes back here, it's always e5, by the way. It's not d5. Can't remember why. And he just voluntarily gives up a knight. Wow. Interesting. Now, question then is, what do we do? My hunch is to take here. This is going to leave my pawn a bit stranded. Um, I'm not worried about the bishop coming out. I can meet that with c3. Okay, my opponent is already, it appears, flummoxed. Where is this? Is that Bangladesh? Yeah. My opponent is Toha262000. And we, we've already got a... Serious advantage in this game. Okay. Queen here. Right. There we go. Now, the issue is that I can actually just defend that with my knight. I can come here or here. Block the pin and also defend e4. And again, gut instinct says knight g3. There's nothing really wrong with knight f2 apart from it's just a little bit further away from the middle of the board. They, they both guard this square. Knight g3 guards this one and this one. Knight f2 guards this one and, and that one. Okay, I'm going to come back here. Right, I, I've still got pressure on this knight. Um, and the queen can't give check. So... I have to say, this is probably a line I've never seen before in the in the Halloween variation of the Vienna Gambit declined. An idea is def... Ooh, and that blunders a queen. There is a royal fork, but it's covered by, by a pawn. My opponent is seriously just self-destructing now, bro. Okay, well, the least said about that, the better. Let's do a quick look at the game review. Um, I'll take 99.3 accuracy in the 2000. See, it's 2000 because I'm rated 1250 right now, right? If I was rated 1700, it would say, oh, that was a 2300 game. I don't know why you do that, chess.com. Curse you. Okay, so the point of this is, if you face the Vienna with the black pieces, what should you do? Okay, so this is the Vienna Gambit. And you don't decline it by bringing the knight out because of this. Okay, now it's plus 1.3 in white's favor. So here, what they have to do is they have to retreat the knight to g6 or c6. g6 is slightly less bad, but if they do that, again, it's going to be e5, right? Always e5, okay? Um, if I go back, if if... Well, it's got to be e5 in this case to, to hit this knight. Now, 
in for white players, Vienna players, if they retreat here, e5 is one point is two point one. Right? D five don't come into it. D five doesn't even feature. Why not? Well let's see. D five they play knight e five, nice securely in the middle of the board, and it's actually pretty equal from this point. Right? Because you, you, you're giving that knight a good place to go to. Now with this move, as we've seen, he can't go there or there because of our knight. And he can't go there or there because of our queen. Right? So this is by far the more forcing move. The best move for black here is to retreat. And here you've got this nice center. You're absolutely going to bring your knight out for many reasons, not least this, to prevent the queen from coming out with check. But you're also defending both pawns. You're also preparing to castle, get this bishop out, short castle, get your rook on the semi-open file. Okay, happy days. Let's play another one. 1250. 1250, and we've got a 1387. Santiago 53. Santiago is... Um, Saint James, is it? Okay, the bishop's opening. I'm going to play the Calabrese counter gambit. I like it. It works pretty well for me, I think. I haven't checked it in a little while. Okay, the exchange variation. This is... Right, now we're getting serious. Okay, the queen's going to come and take this, and I play rook g7. And interestingly, I think this is an equal position. But white is the one who has to tread quite carefully. Okay, now I want to throw my junk out into the board as quickly as possible. I would, I, My king hasn't moved. I would love to get my king castled queenside. And notice, it's white to move. White has developed nothing at this point in time. Not a sausage. Now, I'm thinking, I want to get this, this pawn out. Right, my bishop is my light square bishop's lined up with a queen. Question is, is it d5 or is it d6? Problem with d6 is it blocks in this fella. But that fella's kind of got a job to do at the minute, preventing me from being in check. Um, d6, now I'm just threatening like to take this pawn with tempo. If d6, if they take, I can take with my bishop with tempo, also threatening c2. If d5. And that the way to resolve these questions is rather than just go, I don't know, right? We'll figure it out. D5, if they take, queen takes, targeting here. And I still have, I'm playing D5. I'm going to be bold and courageous. All right, I'm threatening to take this pawn for free now. I'm a pawn down, but... I have the center control, right? I'm closer to castle. Well, not really. I mean, all he has to do is move one knight. He castles short, but castling with an open h file, I don't know. Okay, so he's targeting this pawn, what are defended, but it's attacked twice. And he is targeting this pawn, what are defended by my bishop. Now, I could, for example, take this pawn. Queen can't come here, here with check. Can't come in here with check as bishop guards, right? Can't come here. What's she gonna do? What you gonna do, huh? Threatening to take that? I don't think so. He's thinking, maybe I'm gonna play like bishop e6 and then nab this pawn. No. I could even push on, but I'm just gonna take it. Sod it, take it, you know? Especially if we've got aspirations of long castles, right? Semi-open, defile. Sunday, Monday, happy days. As the song goes. Also, I've got ideas of this as well. Knight c6, knight d4, hit and queen, and the c2 for Karoo. We do love a for Karoo around these parts. And then here also defends e6, so I could maybe get my bishop out. Knight can't come there because of my queen and can't come there because of my pawn. What the hell are you doing? This? It's 
Santiago 53 just simply didn't think that one through. Ooh. Right, now. I really want to castle long. The problem is, in order to castle long, I have to move my bishop. The problem is, if I move my bishop now, Queenie takes here with a fork on my rook and knight. This would not be nice, precious. No, my love, not nice at all. How about this, this... I do have knight here, right? And that threatenizes this. It also threatenizes this as well, which I quite like. I do, I'm quite fancying that. Also defends this. So look, put the knight here. Okay, and now, this is really interesting because what you need to do then, once you've got used to the idea of framing the problem on your move, what is the, what do you have to do, right? So the problem for me here is I really want to get castled, right? If I can get castled, I'm a piece up. I'm laughing, right? The problem is that in order to castle, I have to move my bishop. My bishop's defending the pawn. The pawn is under attack. Okay. That is a problem defined to solve. Now, if I do this, my idea is that I might prompt the queen to vacate this b-file. I might. But then what I get to do is I then get to calculate what is white going to do. And the way that we do that... I can even flip the board and say, and if you're in a tournament, you can walk around the other side of the board and look over your opponent's shoulder, go, <sighs> right? So if I do this, now let's do the same for white. And this is a secret trick to get you into the strong intermediate level, right? This is what people at this level don't do. If I do this, right? It's not like I wonder what my opponent's going to do. So, like, well, what is my opponent? What is my best, my opponent's best option? Okay, if they want to, so here, queen's under attack has to move. Okay, she can't go there. She can't stay there. She can't go there. She can't go there because of the bishop. She can't go there because of the bishop. Right? She can't go here because of this pawn. Is she going to go there with check? No, because the knight guards. Aha! Right? So I then conclude that if I do this. Queenie has to vacate the b-file. She might come here, in which case she's probably going to get a pawn in her face. Actually, if she comes here, she'll be attacking this too. So I could actually think about maybe that. I don't know. But she also wants to defend this. So is she going to do this? Yeah? Do you know what I mean? But then I've got that with tempo, and then I get to castle. Hooray! depending on the safety of a7. Right, so I didn't really, I kind of cut short my thinking a bit, right? I, I went, oh, the queen's got to vacate this file, which is good for me, but what I failed to do was actually think, well, what is gonna happen? Now, I could bring back the knight. But I still have this idea which I kind of kind of fancy. Still have this idea, actually. That's quite good. That's a check. This pawn's pinned. I t we'll come back to the queen unit. I know I'm in check. All right, calm down. Right here, pawn can't take because it's pinned, so king has to go in the corner. If my rook was on here, and I get this move in, king goes in the corner, big bada boom. End of game. So, for that reason... I'm going to do this with tempo. I'm going to play this move because I think I've got sneaky, sneaky checkmate going on. I think my opponent's going to go like here and target this. And I'm going to go, oh no, my rook. And play this. While he's thinking, let's just check. There, check. Pawn can't take. There's only one legal move. That is defended by the knight. The king has no moves. It's mate. Right? Queen here. Mm. 
Now, what White should be thinking now is why did my opponent play that move? And he'll be thinking, well, if the queen comes over, I can push h3. But on the other hand, there's a free pawn. I'm a piece down. And what's more, after this free pawn, there's that. And this is not check. And this is not good. This is the end, my only friend, the end. I thank you. Well, weren't that pretty? Weren't that pretty? Let's go and check it out. Okay, here we are on the analysis board. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking for a 1984.5. I had a miss. Boo hiss. 1900, there we go. And we didn't even get out of the opening. 1900. Where was miss? I don't know. It's not saying, okay. So the Calabresi counter gambit, yes, computer says it's inaccurate. That's also inaccurate. The rest of it kind of flows. We've seen this a lot, okay? Great move, you have to do it. You give up this pawn. You have to play rook g7. It's, it's the best move, okay? Queen retreats and now this is my miss, okay. Computer didn't like it. Computer says, bam, bam, our survey says, develop the knight. That's quite, that's a whole pawn, a pawn and a half difference there, mate. Right? The point is, c2 is vulnerable. c2 with the king rook fork. This queen's way offside. Get that, forget about the pawns. Forget about the pawn structure. Bzz, 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 bzz. I did want to just release this bishop. I was obsessed with this alignment issue between the bishop and queen, wasn't I? If in doubt, develop. But I wasn't in too much doubt. The only doubt I was in was whether d6 or d5 was the best move in this case. So let's have a look. In this move, in this position, f takes e4 equally, free pawn, uh, and knight c6 just behind, and then d6, not d5. It didn't like d5. d5, so we go from minus 1.3 to Minus, uh, it's a pawn difference. So I played this, okay. And that's a blunder. So I capture the pawn, free pawn. And that's, whoa, that's terrible mistake. Okay, knight c6 now is best. And they just blunder their knight. But this, this, I liked. Right, spotting the checkmate threat. Right, so it's like little checkmate sequence, and it comes from this. Right, that pawn is pinned, therefore these squares are not covered. This square has a check on it. If that, the pawn can't take because it's pinned, like we said. He comes here, and then I have a knight on here. You have to remember that. Bam, bam, bam. So if I can drop a major piece here with a knight there, it's checkmate. Right now, my queen's busy because she's holding the pin. So what we do is, oh no, my pawn. Okay, unfortunate error. Check, bang, boom. Brilliant, well, I loved that, I loved that. Not a 2000th game, but uh, deeply satisfying all the same. Now there is a part, big part of me that thinks, look, I'm playing players who are weaker than my own level. So this guy's like 1250, or what was he? No, he's 1100, wasn't he? Um, so it's easier to look good and to find good moves when, you're playing, when your opponent is playing weaker moves. So although I've got like a string of 1900, 2000, 2100 games, 
playing against weaker opponents. I mean, at the same time, I'm getting my ass kicked as well from time to time. Uh, that that's that's the nature of, of the game. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can carry on that performance over when you're playing uh, opponents who who don't blunder their knight, right, and who don't play weak moves. So uh, yeah, I can't I can't really take this to the bank and say, well, now I deserve to be a 1900. That will take more work. But uh, these two games, heap of fun, very instructive. I hope. Hope you took a lot out of them. Thanks for watching. See you soon.